Okay, thank you. For exactly 20 years ago, uh, this weather station uh, and a deep instrumented borehole uh, in permafrost were established at Juvasö in southern Norway. I was a PhD student at that time, and uh, I got the opportunity to, to kind of put this station on the map. Uh, this was one of the first reference stations for permafrost monitoring in Europe. And data from this station was uh, provided the first opportunity for long-term trends to be analyzed. And we also had poor knowledge at that time about permafrost conditions in Scandinavia. And together with my colleagues from Norway, uh, we have now made this and other permafrost stations operational. We have recently launched a new web portal, cryomet.no. Uh, this portal gives access to the latest operational products and current state of sea ice, snow, uh, permafrost in uh, Norway, Arctic and Antarctic. And we are a quite large group at uh, Met Norway, uh, focusing on the cryosphere. So this presentation focuses on the operational permafrost monitoring um, at Met Norway and uh, available and planned products uh, on the, uh, related to permafrost. Permafrost is not visible uh, at the ground surface. So why, why, how do we monitor uh, permafrost? Um, and one of the most uh, direct and the best uh, ways of monitoring permafrost is uh, with an instrumented borehole. You need a big drilling machine like this. Uh, and this is the best, uh, best way of monitoring changes in the permafrost to instrument a deep uh, borehole in permafrost. Uh, permafrost is defined by uh, the World Meteorological Organization uh, as one of the essential climate variables. And the most direct indicator of changes is the thermal state and active layer thickness of the permafrost. And these variables are currently mo monitored globally uh, through several international programs. Uh, Measurements shows that uh, permafrost now is warming at a global scale and uh, it's heavily affected by degradation, like this picture from uh, Ellesmere Island in northern Canada. And uh, enhanced warming and degradation is also uh, predicted for the future. And this will affect the uh, carbon cycle, ecosystems, hydrology, but also slope stability and infrastructure will be affected by this warming and thawing permafrost. Extensive monitoring activities are undertaken today uh, with the general aim of documenting the distribution, state, and changes of permafrost on a long-term basis. And so far, most of the monitoring are performed manually during fieldwork by researchers and observers uh, shown at this picture. So this is typically a picture of the researcher on, uh, in, on the Arctic tundra of Canada. Uh, going out once a year. And now it's an increasing need for real-time updates on permafrost data. So for Norway and, uh, and Svalbard, we have uh, now uh, four stations that uh, runs operational. Um, ground temperature data is transmitted to uh, Met Norway uh, in real time for operational uh, uh, monitoring. And there are also established operational weather stations uh, with extended measurements program at these sites. And the co-located monitoring provides, uh, um, provides researchers and other users um, with real time data to study and monitoring effects of, in, for instance, warm summers. Uh, on the permafrost. And the data may contribute to early warning systems for uh, natural hazard associated with permafrost thaw. And I will show some uh, examples now for, uh, for, uh, from three of these stations on uh, some of the products that now uh, are available at uh, Cryomet now. So going back to the deep borehole in the permafrost, uh, some of the reference borals we know how in Scandinavia and also in Europe and other places in Alaska, they have a, a 100 meter deep. 
And uh, a lot of the monitoring activity is uh, globally is uh, taken in the upper 10 or 20 meter. So one of the um, uh, most uh, also one, of, one of the most um, critical or most important variable is the thickness of the active layer uh, down to the permafrost the top of the permafrost. And then we have also uh, a depth typically between 10 and 20 meter depth. Uh, called the depth of zero annual, annual amplitude that shows the long-term trends in, in permafrost. So these two uh, levels are the most uh, monitoring, monitored parts. So I will start with the ground surface. I'm looking at one of the products from one of these four stations I showed you. This is from uh, Juvasø in southern Norway. Uh, the black line here shows the, this year uh, conditions starting at the 1st of January and uh, ending today. Uh, and we see the effects uh, this, this, uh, this year is now comp are compared to the previous 20 years. Uh, the measurements started 20 years ago. So this uh, gray line in the background and the gray hatched area is the normal, the mean and normal variability on standard deviation. And then you have the dotted line showing the maximum and minimum values. So we see now from this uh, data already that part of this winter was uh, extremely warm in, uh, in uh, southern Norway. We had actually one of the warmest winter or the warmest winter recorded. So this is also clearly visible in, uh, in part of the um, periods uh, monitored. If you go to northern Norway, Iskuras, uh, looking at the same depth near, near ground surface, it is a 20 centimeter depth. We see also here the warmest uh, uh, monitored uh, year so far at this site. We had, uh, in addition to high temperature, we also have a very thick snow cover this year in North Norway. So a lot of snow that uh, prevents uh, heat from the ground to escape. So we have uh, a very high temperature uh, at new surface uh, uh, this year. Going down to the top of the permafrost, the permafrost table where temperature is always below zero, we see also the effects of this very warm winter at, uh, in South Norway again, Juvasø. We see that uh, parts of this winter have been uh, at the highest level or near the highest level so far. If you move to Svalbard, then we have the opposite. We had a very cold uh, winter when we have uh, been used uh, hearing from Svalbard that the last 10 or 20 years have been uh, uh, extremely warm. But actually this winter was uh, uh, among the coldest in the, in the, for quite many years. So we also see from the record starting in 1999 that this uh, particular, uh, at this time of the year when the temperature is normally at the coldest, uh, at the lowest, we have now we are very close to the actual minimum value observed during this time of uh, this this time period. So this shows quite nicely the current situation in some of this uh, mon at some of these monitoring sites. We are now working with uh, to ex uh, extend this uh, with several new products. This is one example showing the development of the active layer that's based on the zero uh, isotherm. So you can, for every day, you can uh, look at how much of the active layer above the permafrost uh, has uh, reached uh, zero degrees uh, for each, time, uh, each day of the year. So uh, this is just an example from uh, last year, 2019, showing as the black curve. So uh, in, uh, in August last year, we had a quite uh, deep penetration of the zero isotherm, quite close to the maximum uh, depth so far. And this is quite critical for, for instance, slope stability when you're monitoring the effects of a very warm summer in permafrost uh, regions. We will also, uh, we will also quite soon uh, present or um, um, uh, publish some uh, products showing the long-term trends. This is an example from 10 and 20 meter depth uh, close to the zero annual amplitude. You see at 10 meter, we have some annual variability, one degree or so. At 20 meter depth, the, black, the, the dark blue here, we have no more annual uh, variation. So here you really show the long-term trends from the, from the previous 20 years. It's a very strong warming signal uh, up in Svalbard at the moment. 
and also looking at the whole section from the surface and down to the bottom of the borehole, 100 meter down in the permafrost, we can also make annual profiles showing the, for instance, this example, uh, average uh, temperature for each year since the measurements started in 1999. And here you nicely also see the strong warming that now is uh, going on on Svalbard. With uh, so far 2019, the warmest year uh, close to the, the zero and amplitude depth. So, uh, looking at the uh, coming years, we, we think this is a very um, uh, good uh, contribution to also traditional uh, climate monitoring. And uh, one of the advantages is, is now we have a cool location with, uh, with weather station, official weather stations that are located at these sites. And uh, this is a part of the national uh, meteorological infrastructure uh, in Norway. And this uh, ensures, uh, for the long-term perspe perspective, this ensures um, uh, long-term and stable operation and service. And we can now integrate this as a part of the operational uh, permafrost measurements. This, this can be into, integrated into the global uh, telecommunication system, GTS, uh, to make this data available for the whole, whole world. And this is highly relevant, for instance, for some global um, uh, networks like the Global Cryosphere Watch and Global Terrestrial Network for Permafrost. So thank you.